I'm Lily Sertz. Well, we're gonna continue on. See how much trouble we can get ourselves into. And yeah, so we're in part four. And I hope I'm doing decently well. I don't know. I do not know. So, uh, we're just rolling with this. Those are actually ultrasound. Ultrasound is, um, ultrasound CT, MRI are, um, images, and blood work is laboratory. Uh, ultrasound use, is, um, uh, uses waves, waves to basic, to, um, look at, look at into the body. They're commonly used for pregnant women because, um, due to the waves, it actually doesn't cause radiation, and that can actually hurt the baby. And, um, CT and MRI, you can technically use it, but, uh, for a pregnant woman, but, um, and that actually gives you the most detail, even with non-pregnant, but it's not always available. It is kind of expensive as hell. So you have to kind of go down with the CT. But it's not indicated for pregnant women. You. Because it is very. Like what I mentioned. It is. Um, radiation prone. So. Actually a risk factor. So. Um, but if it's necessary. Then you kind of have to use it. But. It is more counterindicated for pregnant women due to, um, you, it will cause, um, defects, birth defects in, uh, the baby. So you have to actually, a pregnant woman is immune compromised. So that's why you don't recommend using it. And that's more available. But the one with the most... That gives you the most information is MRI. If you have, let's say you have a one with um, trauma, head trauma, or a fracture, spine fracture due to a trauma, you prefer the MRI because it has more detail. But it can be expensive and it's not the best for that reason because it's expensive. If you have it, then use it, because that can actually give you a lot of information. But if you can't, then CT is what you have to use. CT is, um, um, tomo um cu computerized tomograph. Or tomografía computada in Spanish. It's computerized, computerized tomography. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to know what it is, that's actually very accurate for imaging. So. I don't suppose your husband is with you today. For Julie had an engagement, he couldn't get out. Oh, talking to the family, that is actually... That is actually, um... You have to do with procedures, even with, uh, bad news. L like, let's... With this one is the spread of cancer. You would have to say that, uh, say that, and... And even with surgery. Um, such as my sister, she actually had... She actually has screws in her leg because she actually had a fracture of the acetabulum. It, it, acetabulum is the ball of the femur, of the femur, of your leg, and we don't know how she, we don't know how she broke it, but supposedly um, she was actually had a risk factor for the fracture already, uh, because one of her legs was actually growing faster than the other, and she fell and it broke. And, but they had to tell my parents that, oh, she needs to go to surgery, this would be the best for her, 
and the risk factors. Yes. Because that is, as a doctor, you have to explain the risk factors and, and the benefits. As a doctor, you have to give information and and suggest an, in, an informed decision. You have to tell them the why you think this is a good decision, what are the risk factors of it, like the bad risk effects that could happen, everything to your patient. Within an understanding and empathetic sensibility. Because communication is a very, very big thing for medicine. It could save, one, protect you. That's actually one of the top things that could save you from a lawsuit. Communication. And communication just helps your patient. Helps your patient in every sense of the word. Yeah, it's giving bad news. It sucks, but you have to do it. You have to do it because the family has a right to know. You have, as a doctor, you have to be honest. But it doesn't mean you don't be a, you have to be empathetic, but you have to be honest. You cannot lie. Oh, nice origami. The art of folding paper. Very nice. Oh, basically uh, clinical rounds. Taking on the patient, seeing how they're doing. And he's a pediatric surgeon, so that makes sense. Why he he's checking um, checking on kids. Because if, um, sometimes... <laughs> because that communication does actually help your patient. Like, even having a fun, easy going is actually helpful. And it actually has been proven that if you give a sense of happiness to to um, your patient, they actually it helps their immune system helps their immune system to become stronger. That's why with a lot of um, senior citizens, we have to tell them to. Um, not fall into depression because actually they have a high risk of um of emotional distress and actually falling into depression and actually depression and you being sad actually lowers your immune system and and with with senior citizens they can actually get um more frequently like um babies get infections very very frequently and very with a really really strong effect because one they couldn't be have diabetes yeah so it makes sense why he's doing for this kid he's he's making her happy making her feel good because it, it actually helps her immune system and it just makes a better relationship and a better sense of trust because as a doctor, we need your trust, trust to better help you, but within a respectful manner, like to, that it doesn't become abusive, just as a way of, we having a sense of rapport. Rapport is basically like, um, a medical, medic-patient relationship. 
to increase the uh, that sense of trust within um, a doctor and patient's relationship. Hmm? So it makes sense what he was doing with the kid, trying to get her happy. Yeah, it is kind of painful. The idea of seeing your son passing away and you can't do anything it makes sense. It's kind of sad. That you just gotta hold on as best as you can. And make the most of the memories of everything of as long as you can. Yeah, I'm just saying my experiences in this. It's actually very, very accurate, oddly enough. I have to admit, this is actually accurate of a hospital setting. I have to say, Voltage did their homework on how a hospital is run, how a hospital functions, from the medical, medic-patient relationship, yeah, actually, yeah, <laughs> I actually have to admit that, like explaining bad news, even though it's tough, but you have to do it. As a physician, and the healthcare pro professionals that are fighting against COVID, right on, right on. Thank you, and be safe, and be safe, right on. Fight on and be careful. Be safe.
Yeah, when you have a patient that is terminal, it's, it's tough. It's emotionally and physically tough on the patient, the family, and it's that idea of, like, you have to be a unit and it's really, really hard. Like, out of, there is, like, senior abandonment. So, it's really, really tough. It's not easy. It's not easy. Especially with a terminal disease. the funny one you love I kind of want to go with the funny one you love him that much but I have to I have to be the more logical one in this one even though that one's funny as hell you love him that much that, that was just funny that was just funny but I think the more logical one is the nice um, you respect your boss I, I, I think it's that one Even though the first option is quite funny, I might, I might do that one on my off time. <laughs> Just to see what would happen. Just to see. What... I'm so jealous that you get to work for a boss you can respect. Wow, rude words come as easy as breathing for you, huh? What? Whoops. Let that slip. Because I was thinking on my current situation after all. Oh. oh, funny banter. Yeah, that happens. Funny banter happens. Like, cheeky funny banter. Like, even, even the banter even goes on to... Um, a lot of the funny banter in the hospital um, kind of goes sexual to... Um, very poop jokes. Yeah, it's just because we deal with every we deal with that stuff every day that it becomes like we're just so used to it. It's like that meme where there's they're talking about diseases and um diseases and they're eating pizza. That that's basically. That meme is so, so true and so laughable. Because it is so true. Because we see that stuff every day. And... And that's actually a way for us to release all the stress. Is humor. Like, we even talk about our experiences. Some experiences are tough. Like, where we're just like... We feel like 
down, like, such as, for me, the first time I saw a patient die after doing, um, CPR and it wasn't successful, but then my, my friend, who was also rotating, rotating but with a different school, she also gave me a little bit of a, like, I explained why I was feeling the way I was feeling. And it was a sense of understanding. Like, it was like, oh, okay, that's understandable. Like, understandable the way you're feeling. And she, she explained the medical history of the patient. And I actually started to understand for her actually passing away was actually helpful. So, actually, we have to talk to each talk within each other. Like, have humor, a lot of humor, and talk it out. Because that actually helps us. Because medicine itself is physically stressful, but also, and they don't usually say that as often, and they should, it's... It is more emotionally stressful. And that's why we might seem like like we pig out or or we're laughing at things that people won't think are funny. But for us, it's funny because we use that as a barrier, as a protection for ourselves to keep us 